Our next speaker is Dr. Christian Kessler, Research Coordinator, Emanuel Hospital Berlin and Institute of Social Medicine, Epidemiology and Health Economics, Charity University, Medical Center, Berlin, Germany. He is going to speak about osteoarthritis in knee and his observation with an holistic approach. Christian. Okay, also from my side, good morning, respected everybody in this hall. So, greetings from the Charité Medical University uh, in Berlin. Um, I want to start with a uh, small uh, extract from the Charaka Samhita also, which the Indians among you are, of course, aware of. Kritsnuhi loko buddhi macham acharya, for the wise, the whole world um, uh, is a teacher. And uh, I chose this because this um, is an international uh, project consortium, and we have learned a lot from each other throughout the last five years. And I'm going to uh, do a quick ride uh, uh, through a five-year program that we conducted in Berlin. This is where we work at, a nice working environment uh, right uh, close to Lake Wannsee in Berlin. And uh, what am I going to talk about? I'm going to be talking about this trial that we have performed, complex Ayurvedic treatment and osteoarthritis of the knee against uh, standard care. The acronym is the Charaka trial. And I'm going to present the first results here that have just come out of the statistical office last week. I was about to cancel my participation, but uh, fortunately the statistician managed to uh, give us the first results, at least for the primary outcome, which I'm going to present today. Principal investigators were Professor Michalsen and Professor Witt from Charité uh, University Berlin. And uh, our uh, cooperation partners were CCRS Ayush, the Rosenberg uh, European Academy for Ayurveda and Bierstein that Karin has just mentioned, and the PD Patel Hospital in Nadiaj, Gujarat, India, and Ayurvedic Point uh, Milan in Italy. And this study, uh, study was very uh, generously supported uh, financially from uh, which is now the ministry, formerly the Department of Ayush uh, in New Delhi. Um, so what was the background of this trial? Until now, no systematic data existed for the clinical effectiveness of whole systems Ayurveda, in particular uh, when compared to conventional standard care for osteoarthritis of the knee. And uh, we have done also a, a systematic review and uh, meta-analysis on the existing evidence on uh, Ayurvedic trials on OA in general. And um, all of those studies, uh, um, or uh, almost all of them at least, dealt um, mainly with monomodal approaches. And there were only very few uh, who uh, included uh, more than one um, elements of therapy into their um, trial designs. And there was no whole systems uh, approach trial in that meta-analysis. So what was our ultimate goal of this trial? We wanted to compare the effectiveness of a complex multimodality Ayurvedic treatment with conventional standard care based, and this is very important, on Ayurvedic diagnoses in the treatment of osteoarthritis of the knee. And what we did in terms of methods, this was a 150 patient um, randomized controlled trial in a two-arm design, a multi-center in Germany, in Berlin actually, both centers, and the overall trial duration a little longer than expected, um, uh, 2010 to 2015 for several reasons. And um, if you want to know more about um, the methods, then uh, you can read through our methods publications that was just recently published uh, in print a little more than a year back in the journal Trials. And you can see details there. What we also did, and we're also going to separately publish this, is a nested diagnostic pilot study uh, with the first 30 patients. I'm not going to go into detail here because uh, of a lack of time. But what we did, to put it in short, uh, the first uh, 30 patients underwent a sequence of uh, Ayurvedic uh, professionals, four of them, who independently and uh, without knowing what the others did, uh, did a uh, Ayurvedic assessment of these patients. Both groups uh, received 15 individual treatment appointments within the first um, uh, 12 weeks, and study visits took place at baseline after six and after 12 weeks, and follow-up questionnaires were sent to all of the patients after six and 12 months. Also, um, details uh, for this are published in the paper I've just uh, shown you. What were the key inclusion criteria for, for this trial? Patients had to be in between uh, 40 and 70 years of age, they um, 
had to show up with a pre-diagnosed ONE according to American College of Rheumatology criteria, and they also had to bring along an existing body imaging uh, of the affected knee no older than two years, and they had to have an average pain of a minimum of 40 millimeters on a 100 millimeter visual analog scale. What did the patients receive in the Ayurveda arm uh, if they got randomized into the Ayurveda group? Um, it is important uh, again to mention that uh, once they got randomized into the Ayurveda group, um, the treatment was based only on the Ayurvedic diagnosis and uh, the recommended treatment uh, was tailored and uh, could include measures from the uh, above mentioned elements, manual treatments, uh, external treatments, steam application, oil massage, um, knee yoga postures, nutritional advice and uh, food supplements, lifestyle advice and um, uh, introduction to self-massage, um, etc. And in the conventional arm, if patients got randomized into the conventional arm, um, of course, the conventional treatment was based only on the conventional diagnosis, which is, of course, osteoarthritis of the knee, and was based on um, international uh, current guidelines, including uh, quadriceps exercise, intensive physiotherapy, knee school, occupational therapy, nutritional advice if overweight, and pain medication uh, if applicable, and they also received 15 appointments each. What was the primary outcome measure? The primary endpoint of this study was uh, uh, the change in the WOMAC score, the Western Ontario and McMaster University Osteoarthritis Index after 12 weeks. I'm not gonna go into the secondary endpoints because we don't have uh, the final results out here yet. Statisticians are still working, just presenting the primary endpoint here. And statistics, to keep it short, uh, we did an ITT analysis, including all randomized patients not excluded. Uh, missing data was multiply uh, imputed by maximum likelihood-based regression methods and mean values uh, overall copies of each WOMAC item served um, as the basis for the ANCOVA model used. To depict it once again, what we actually did and what the uh, adaptation of this RCT was that makes it uh, more suitable for Ayurveda is all patients, of course, showed up with the, the conventional diagnosis of osteoarthritis of the knee in the first place, and they had to fulfill inclusion and exclusion criteria as before mentioned. But then all of these patients, all 150 patients, underwent an Ayurvedic diagnosis. And then after that, only after that, the randomization process took place, and patients got randomized into one or the other group. Uh, in which uh, um, uh, half of them received um, Ayurvedic treatment based on Ayurvedic diagnosis, and the other half received conventional treatment based on a conventional diagnosis. These are some of the people that took part in the trial in different stages. Not all of them are on this picture. And here are the results, uh, the WOMEC baseline. Please take a look at it. They don't look very nice yet because this is uh, just a preliminary depiction because the data um, I have just received uh, this week. But as you can see, uh, um, the thick nodes in the middle, um, on the left side it is um, Ayurveda in red and blue for conventional on the right side. Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, the thick nodes in the middle represent the WOMAC baseline values. Mm, and these are actually quite similar in both groups, which is good, because there is no baseline difference in between these groups. And actually, the WOMEC score, this is also nice um, if you have conducted the trial, are actually quite high. So you can see uh, there are 76 patients in the Ayurveda arm uh, and 71 in the conventional arm uh, due to randomization effects. We didn't end up with 75, 75, and a few dropouts, but this is normal. Um, anyway, you can see uh, the baseline values are pretty much uh, similar. And now you see, and this is uh, uh, quite impressive, that firstly, there is a highly significant reduction in both groups for the WOMEC score. Mm, and not only the difference between groups is highly significant, but as you can see on the table on the right side, um, the uh, WOMEC mean score in the Ayurveda group uh, dropped down from 91.5 to 29.8, and in the conventional treatment group, also highly significant um, from 93 to 62.8. So um, it doesn't look very impressive, but uh, um, inter uh, interpreting these data, this is actually quite impressive. And uh, just uh, showing you the um, 
uh, standard deviation, which relates more to the, um, uh, to the patient values, and now also another depiction uh, with a standard error that relates more to, um, uh, where the S relates more to uh, the mean values. And um, you can see that uh, the mean, of course, remains um, the same at baseline. And um, uh, we also have a highly significant um, uh, reduction um, when uh, uh, changing uh, this image to um, a standard error depiction. And um, as you can see, once again, there is a dramatic drop in the WOMAC score in both groups, but double the size in the Ayurveda group um, than in the conventional group. So what, what has been special um, in this trial? Um, I guess special is that we performed or tried to perform an analysis of Ayurveda as a complex multimodality and whole system of health and medicine. And what's new, we try to consider um, an individualized tailored treatment approach based on Ayurvedic diagnosis in clinical trial settings outside of Asia. So Karin has just outlined that it's important for whatever reason um, uh, Western scientists, health insurance companies, stakeholders and politics and, and governments, they for some reason want trials that have been performed over here in order to talk about the public recognition of um, uh, medical systems outside of Asia. So um, we are not trying to reinvent Ayurveda or be smarter than anyone else, but we're just trying to, to make a point for, um, for Ayurvedic research within Europe in order to support and foster the dissemination and uh, implementation of Ayurveda within healthcare setups. And uh, what have we learned? Um, just a few things to mention, but adapted randomized controlled trials, can it help Ayurveda? That question was asked yesterday, and based on this data, I can really say, yes, absolutely, it helps. But we have to perform it in a way that it uh, takes into account the special characteristics um, of traditional medical systems like Ayurveda, or Chinese medicine, or Kampo medicine, or Tibetan medicine, or traditional European or Native American medicine, etc. What I've also learned, and this is also not to underestimate that international Ayurveda projects consortiums um, require transcultural face validity on the chosen topic beforehand uh, in order to make sure that we're actually talking about the same stuff. And, um, and uh, if we would do such a project again, I think it would be really helpful to sit down uh, beforehand and really make sure that the terms that we're using, that uh, we're actually thinking about the same definition of those terms while planning a trial. And um, can you give me that last slide um, again? And uh, can science and Shastra synergize? Yes, I totally agree. And I think it's more a battle of words than of contents. And uh, I think it's just uh, necessary uh, to um, be close uh, to the object you want to analyze. So this is somewhere in India. I think this is Satpudi National Park. Abhinava Gupta said, Sarvam Sarvatmakam. Everything is the essence of everything else. And uh, this is somewhere in Europe, maybe in Holland. And uh, here it says, everything connects to everything else, which is very similar. Talking about field-based medicine. This is from Leonardo da Vinci, one of Europe's most uh, well-known scientists. So I would like to thank everybody here. Thanks to the organizers for having me. And uh, most of all, thanks to Ayush for um, generously uh, uh, supporting us in the quest uh, of this trial. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Kirsten, for your wonderful presentation.